वेलकम बैक टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑन थॉट्स ऑन एजुकेशन ऑर्गेनाइज्ड बाय कॉलेज दुनिया टुडे वी हैव अजितेश बसानी सो फ्रॉम आचार्य बेंगलोर बिजनेस स्कूल मिस्टर अजितेश बसानी इज बेसिकली एम एस एंड बी ही इज द एग्जीक्यूटिव डायरेक्टर ऑफ एबीबीएस बेंगलोर ही ड्राइव्स द डिजिटल इंजन ऑफ एबीबीएस पीयर रीडिंग इनिशिएटिव्स अक्रॉस प्लेटफॉर्म्स ही आल्सो कैटेलाइजेस कोलैबोरेशंस विद फॉरेन यूनिवर्सिटीज Sir has orchestrated several long-standing student and faculty exchanges, internal, international conferences, and re- research alliances. Uh, sir, uh, very warm welcome to be on this platform where we can engage and get to know more about your college and the students who will be able to see and get an overview regarding all the aspects of the particular college of yours. Uh, what do you think? Uh, You should be the institute top priority for the next ten years for ABBS. So, uh, Ronit, in general, I think there has been a lot of change with NEP coming into place, a lot of confusion. But uh, irrespective of whether that's there or not, or how much time it would take to implement, I think every institution, including ours, is uh, working towards. Uh, you know getting autonomy uh, having academic freedom because i think you know in india we have uh, 40000 odd colleges we have 3000 odd b schools 900 2000 uh, number of autonomous colleges so you know what will happen is a um, lot of consolidation i've been telling this from uh, quite some time but in a war in order to avoid all that we'll have to probably work on uh, academic freedom because academic freedom enables institutions to become more unique and uh, right. its uniqueness is what uh, makes a big difference to a student when he when he or she chooses an institution right that's a, that right that's a, that that's really correct and i agree with that So moving forward with the next question. So, what was your vision for ABBS? So, seven years ago. But prior to that, the vision for the institute had always been to make education accessible. So this is way back in early two thousands, and um, back then access was the only concern. Access and making education relevant for all. So. Right. Whatever we teach, it has to make sense. Whatever we um, make our students learn has to have some application at the end of the day. And today, it's a little different. It's not just about access. Access is already there. Uh, technology has enabled that access become more and more mainstream. Uh, what we right. kind of do today is become facilitators. um help students work on higher order thinking because information is free there there is no point in repeating what is already available so um so has it evolved over time it has it has i think we has have it? consciously made it an effort to make the programs that we offer more experiential in nature um when i say more experiential making sure that the student is not in the classroom all the time Uh, the students right. are out in the field. The students are out doing project-based works, and you know, in general, it's 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 a good habit to assess students outside classrooms because um, the fundamental reason is because uh, companies look at more than just grades when they hire, and uh, we have we have kind of made a note of that each year, and then every time the same kind of you know inputs come from the industry and you have to cater to the industry because you can't uh, ignore the their requirements and um, right. that that has made it more experiential and i think we are moving towards um a, a place where it almost becomes like the uh, classroom learning is probably 20% or 25% and mostly people like uh, more engagement and more practical you know uh, scenarios to be yeah i think training all, yeah because uh, you know students don't have the attention span and it really doesn't make sense to have a regular 60 minute class filled with 60 odd students and a faculty uh, gone are those days 
uh, students demand different uh, pedagogical tools and they uh, they require different stimuli basically to learn something new and uh, that that comes down to really the faculty and you can have a great faculty teaching the hardest subject or you could have the uh, easiest subject taught by a faculty who doesn't know how to engage students so right. it, that's that's why we always say that faculty makes the biggest difference and uh, we have ensured that our screening process for faculty selection is quite hard and uh, <laughs> we we have realized that you know it's sometimes better that way because students at the end of the day uh, judge an institution or have strong opinions of an institution predominantly based on right. the kind of faculty that it is i would just extend this question with the uh, our add on question onto this uh, how far along in implementing that vision are you um see to be very frank i always always feel that we are very very far away um every time we feel we are getting there we feel like we have um a thousand more miles to go and that has always been the feeling but i think the only way we kind of realize how far we have come is um when we kind of take a pause and reflect at the journey because if you look at institutions across we are quite young we started in 2008 at least the business school started in 2008 and in barely 15 years or i should say what 14 yeah 14 15 years we have completed three cycles of nac with a grade two cycles of nba uh, two cycles of icb usa and then we are truly autonomous so i think in terms of speed we have grown quite quickly and uh, in terms of realizing where we want to be i think there is a lot more scope a lot of interesting things are happening in the education space um the shift is happening towards higher order thinking the shift because you know we have to be very mindful of what is happening in the world it's not just about the jobs but uh the jobs that are changing and um right future will all be about decision making creativity it will be about having people who can think critically because um no nobody cares about whether you know this language to code or that language to code and and the future is changing so i think every institution even us uh, we are aligning ourselves towards that and that journey itself should take another 5 10 years uh, at least at least 5 10 years to be 100% sure that um the entire curriculum is not the same because um, that's that's the vision I'm very sure it will be happening yeah um, yeah because that would be uh, definitely happen because the current structure doesn't work uh, in terms of what the future needs and i think uh, we would like to evolve and i keep telling actually i keep telling even um our directors principals saying that you know the whole idea should be to experiment institutions who do not experiment will not survive and that's something i've believed in to the core um only when you experiment will you get innovation out of it and if you're trying to be to safe and see what everyone else is doing and copying that uh, you you just get a replica of another instance so um it it becomes becomes very important because you know we are, we are in those times where there's nothing wrong in experimenting and seeing something work or fail because you will figure out that every institution will have a different approach towards the same thing so the outcomes will be very different and um, and, and and i think we should do that more to get something unique out of the entire student learning experience Right. Okay. Uh that's great uh it's a good insight from your end. Uh moving forward with the next question. So, I just wanted to ask like what would you like people to know about ABPS Bangalore that they should know about it? What is the USP? Oh, USP, I think we have quite a few unique things that we do. 
Uh, one, our ca- campus is completely green. We generate about 60%, 66% of more, you know, of, of the electricity that we generate is 66% more than what we consume. So we are truly uh, net zero in, in, in a sense. And the other USP I would probably say is we have something called theater in management. And like I said, experiment is very important. We introduced this theater in management and uh, we got some really great results uh, because we wanted one or two batches to come out. And, uh, you know, we wanted to give a twist to how business communication or effective communication um, takes shape when you introduce theater and when you marry management to it. So uh, this, this turned out to be very unique. We realized not many of them are doing it. And, uh, I feel most people should, or at least uh, business schools should implement something like this because uh, communication can be a dry subject. Uh, nobody wants to always uh, listen or write. Sometimes you'll have to enact. And um, right. that gives you uh, a real life, almost like a simulation of what would happen in different situations in different parts of your careers. So I think that was a very uh, unique thing that helped us make a mark or at least helped us make that difference in terms of what we do. Great, great to hear that, sir. Uh, so, um, if I ask, like, what are the, some of the biggest challenges you see, both for higher education in general and for ABBS? Uh, biggest challenges, oh, I think there are more challenges than anything. I think um, getting back to the roots is very important. Mm-hmm. In the sense, I see that there, there are many people getting into higher education, many people getting uh, in the Indian subcontinent mainly for monetary benefits or, you know, profit being the most important aspect. Nothing wrong with profit. It's just that when the intent of not seeing the core objective being met, that is the students, and the students are just a byproduct. You don't, you don't make great institutions. And I think great institutions um, take shape by default when the students are put at the center and uh, they are given what they deserve. They are given an opportunity to really excel, to thrive. And, uh, you know, it, it's really about them uh, growing into something that, uh, you know, we call unleashing the potential. And the thing about higher education is it takes a long time. You don't see it. It's not It's not the immediate placements. The immediate placements is just one metric in terms of checking the student success or institution success. The main thing is to see where that student is after 10 years or 15 years. And to see, you know, because that's really what the whole career is about. It's, it's not the first job. And, um, and I think if all institutions in India start focusing on that. And I think research being such a critical aspect, uh, we recently finished a third cycle of NAC. So um, research has always been the core of every institution, whether it's a business school or engineering or, uh, you know, just just an architect uh, school. So the thing is, um, research has always been India's um, weak point. And if you look at average number of papers that come out of an institute or come out of the country in general, it's far lesser than what we would want it to be. And the moment um, faculty or people of, you know, people who have that passion towards teaching, uh, take up uh, the profession of teaching, I think we will see some difference. And and I think you have recently seen that UGC has introduced this uh, professor of practice. And that's that's such a good initiative in terms of uh, making the whole structure not too strict because initially it was always, do you have this degree? Do you have that degree? Do you have XYZ um, number of years of experience? Only then are you eligible to do this. 
but right. now it's they have understood that we need uh, people of practice who have a real life experience and uh, i think this will make the biggest difference because right now i think if we can solve that first uh the, the rest will kind of fall into place so uh the last question uh definitely i would be love to ask you like is there any suggestions for the young youth and the aspiring students for them you would like to give i i actually hate giving suggestions because i believe uh everyone should make mistakes and that's the best way to learn uh because too many people in this world give suggestions i think you have uh, right from uh the people who uh, you right from teachers to mentors to business people to politicians everyone likes to give suggestions um but i think the most important if i have it have to say uh don't always go behind what the market is saying um market will always say something you do your own research the world is very big and what happens is media is often you know they highly polarize things and when too much polarization happen what happens is people think that this is only the future only ai i mean only this this is the kind of job i need to take no there are hundreds of other things that you can do where you can make a lot of money it's just that pick one and then uh, consistently work on it for 10 years and then take a call on whether that's your path thank you so much sir for sharing so much insights and overview regarding the college i hope the crowd the audience would able to see and get an a complete overview out of it and would be joining your college and have a prosperous life out of it uh, thank you so much again sir for sharing thank you thank you so much sir. and it was really nice meeting you sir over this platform and thanks for coming into this platform and sharing the feedback thank you thank thanks you. sir